Hello, welcome back to Mark's Garden UK at Rose Cottage near Nantwich in Cheshire. This is my Mediterranean scented border. It's got rosemary, thyme and lavender in it. And if you were kneeling here now, you'd be able to smell the lavender coming off this border. It's done really, really well. These plants were only about the size of a large grapefruit when I put them in 12 months ago. And they've done extremely well in this very well-drained border. A few weeks ago, I asked you for your ideas on what to do with all these wonderful lavender blooms. And you didn't disappoint me because you've come back to me with a list of ideas and I'm going to share those ideas with you in this video. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, it's not too late if you've still got some more ideas for lavender blooms, if you want to add them in the comments below this video. But for now, I'll share with you the ideas which we've already got and I'll name check the people who gave me these wonderful ideas. Every single one of these ideas I will be carrying through in videos in the near future, but not today. Today, I'm just going to gather up all the blooms. I've got a pair of haberdashery scissors here. They're very, very sharp and they're really useful uh, for cutting stalks like these lavenders. And I'm putting them into a large open cardboard box and that will go in a cool, dry place and I'll allow them to dry out. It's been really wet recently and this is the first sunny, dry day we've had. And so this is a good opportunity for carrying out this exercise of just cutting away at these blooms. So let's get into it and let's start talking about what I can do with all these wonderful, heavily scented lavender blooms. Well, the first idea I'll share with you is from Andy Farmer. Thanks, Andy. You can bundle them up with thyme and rosemary and give them a good swish in the bath water before you get in. Very relaxing. I'll be tempted to just leave them in the water while I'm in there and I will be doing that, thanks Andy. And I've got thyme and rosemary in this border here anyway, so I can quite easily do that. As I'm cutting these, there's lots of little lavender flowers falling on the floor. Anyway, let's cut a few more off and then let's get back to sharing some of the ideas. Um, lavender is a wonderful um, plant for the uh, for the bees and uh, this border has been absolutely full of bees and on one occasion I came out here and counted 36 bees on these lavender blooms. Well, the bees, are, the bees don't seem to be present at the moment. We're getting into October now. Maybe they've started to go into hibernation. Ever Bee Garden. Thank you for your suggestions. You gave me five. Lavender cookies or shortbread. Well, I'll definitely be doing that because uh, part of my channel will be evolving into st stuff I do in the kitchen. Lavender infused vodka. We're not far off Christmas. So there's another good idea. Lavender pairs well with blueberries and blackberries. How about jams? but use sparingly, otherwise it will taste like soap. Well, I've never had a go at doing jam. Um, I've not got blueberries or blackberries, but I could start growing them. So that's an idea for the future. Lavender sugar. Add one teaspoon of the buds to one cup of caster sugar, or according to taste. Use instead of vanilla sugar in tea, coffee or baking. Make great housewarming gifts if presented with a couple of sprigs of lavender. Uh, and purple ribbon in, in the glass jar. Well, these are all great ideas. Thank you very much. And I will put all these ideas in the description box. And finally, Ever Bee Garden has said, lavender syrup for pancakes or ice cream. Use equal parts caster sugar and water. Bring to the boil, reduce to about half, remove from the heat, then add a couple of lavender flower heads. When cooled, strain and use. Another great idea, which I'll definitely be carrying out. Let's carry on harvesting these wonderful abundant um, lavender blooms into this cardboard box. Now there will come a time in the very near future when I have to prune the lavender bush itself and it's important that you do prune lavender because it can be quite uh, can be quite straggly and if you if you don't prune it the right time you end up with these great big uh, wide spans of straggly bushes but there is a technique to it apparently and that is all about 
pruning it not too far back you don't want to prune into old wood because if you prune into old wood apparently you can end up with bare, bare patches but that is not the subject matter of this video the subject matter of this video is what to do with all these wonderful lavender heads so let's get the next idea which was given to us by Rachel M. I've heard you can make a lavender solution to water plants that slugs and snails like to eat the most. It's meant to be a good deterrent. I've never heard that before, but I'm quite happy to try it. I've got some hostas. Um, so, a lavender solution with water that you put on plants and it deters slugs and snails. Thank you, Rachel M, for that idea. When I planted this border along this path, the idea was that it would uh, it would creep out and grow over this path, and you can see it's done exactly that, and that's that was intentional because I wanted it so that as you walk past, you brushed against it, it would exude a sense of the Mediterranean and essential oils, and, and it does just that. And as I've already said, if you were here, you'd be able to smell them yourself. Particularly in strong sunlight, it uh, it does give off a lovely powerful scent and that's what clearly what attracts the insects and the pollinators uh, so it does just that i've also got rosemary here you can see a nice big bush of rosemary there and that's quite nice as well because it's right next to the kitchen door so if ever i'm cooking anything that requires rosemary I'll just pop out and take a sprig now the next idea is from Anne Ward, who says, you can buy little bags called Eleganza bags from most craft shops, and you can make lavender bags, and you can also put it in water and use as an air freshener. So these little lavender bags, that was an idea I'd kind of already thought of, and I did look them up on Amazon, and I'll, I'll put the link to that product in, in the description box below this video. And yes, it's absolutely true what Anne says, is you can, you can put the flower buds in those little uh, kind of little tiny bags which allow the air to circulate through them and you can place them all around the house or you can even put them in in the drawers and uh, I think from memory my mum used to have some of these lavender bags in the in the drawers and where she kept her clothes and apparently it used to deter moths so there we go another idea thank you Anne Anne is a friend of ours and uh, Anne is encouraging me to go and have a look at the RHS garden uh, in um, Bridgewater, Salford, so we'll be doing a, a tour on that very soon in the near future. Another idea came in from a subscriber whose name is Ekelpamos 6274 Ekelpamos, not sure what that means, uh, but thank you for your suggestion. And the suggestion was, I take a big bunch of it and hang it in the shed, in the garden. Great idea. Keeps the shed smelling nice and fresh. I shall do that as well. And the final the suggestion for this video comes from a subscriber called Caroline Ayres, who says that she uses uh, lavender in bowls of uh, potpourri around the house and uh, it just makes the air have a lavender scent. And of course, I'm quite sure as well that the, the essential oils, which are supposed to be very relaxing, seep out into the atmosphere and create everyone a very chill atmosphere. I'm going to do that. I might put a bit of this by the bed. It might get me a good night's sleep. I'll put the link to these haberdashery scissors in the description box uh, below the video. I, I got these off Amazon and it's incredible how useful they've been in the garden. I don't do any haberdashery at all. <laughs> I've no plans to get into haberdashery, but these I've used to great effect for doing jobs like this in the garden. They're also, I think I bought them originally for cutting that um, cloth uh, weed membrane that you can buy. Um, very useful. So there we go, what a harvest and some great ideas and every one of those ideas I will carry through 
in a future video thank you very much i'll also put them in the description box below this video and if you've got any more ideas that i've not already mentioned feel free to add and add them in the comments below this video um, a couple of points i have waited as long as possible to do this because i wanted the bees to get as much out of this plant as possible um, i did notice a bee uh, rather late in the year so I have left a couple of um, flowers in place just in case it needs some nectar and there's any available so left it till the end of the year this is not a pruning lavender exercise this is a gathering and harvesting exercise I'll do another video on pruning lavender but essentially you don't want to prune too far back into old wood because it won't grow back after you've done that and uh, you'll end up with bare patches so there's a there's a there's a perfect point to how far you, you prune lavender. We'll come back to that another time. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks again for your ideas. I look forward to carrying them through. I'll see you soon for some more lavender adventures. Bye for now. <laughs>